Hello everyone, welcome to the channel and to the series about Shopify. Today we're going to talk specifically about locations and processing times and how this affects your operations in the warehouse as well. Before we go ahead, remember to subscribe to the channel so you can receive updates about the future videos, but also leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed the videos because this is going to help us grow. So I'm not going to tell you more, let's go look at the backend of Shopify. So let's move forward. Ideally, we will start from the locations, which means from where you are shipping the inventory. So you could set up multiple locations on Shopify and generally if you have the basic plan it's up to 1000 locations available now in my case i selected two locations hong kong and the united states because i want to show you how to set up shipping and eventually like how to manage also the inventory in both locations overall there's always a default location so in my case i selected hong kong and uh, of course, you can choose the default location if you want it to be United States or Hong Kong, it depends what's the main location that you're using. For example, many may use Hong Kong, they ship from Hong Kong to the rest of the world and United States locally. So you may want to use the default option from Hong Kong and, and United States will be used for all the orders that have as a destination the United States. So you can also have a priority, you can move with the, uh, let's say, two locations up and down just to set the priority and add multiple locations. So ideally the locations from where you stock inventory, fulfill orders and sell products. Just make sure, just, you know, now uh, relating to what the warehouse and how to basically connect it to the warehouse, just keep in mind that there are some platforms like the fulfillment center platform of the warehouse platform, the WMS, call it the way you want, but it's basically the system you log in to manage inventory orders when it comes to warehousing, okay? the warehouse platform let's call it that way so uh, you need to basically some you need to link the location okay now in some cases uh, some platforms they allow you to uh, basically sync uh, only the locations that you want so they will give you the option to sync only hong kong only united states or both so there are platforms that allow you to do both and filter and play with the automations and platform that don't. So it doesn't really matter how many locations you will have in Shopify. That's mainly for your own reference because such platforms will just get all the orders uh, independently from which location they should be shipped or not. So just be careful uh, whenever you're looking for a new warehouse or a new 3PL, for example, and uh, you're looking at the technology that they are offering you, the platform that you're going to work with, uh, always ask this question like do you split the locations is there any way to connect to just certain locations because let's be clear you may want to use one 3pl for the united states and another 3pl for hong kong it doesn't have to be the same warehouse that offers you two different locations hong kong united states there are in, in many cases you may use two different service providers and at that point you will want to send to the hong kong warehouse only the orders that have been mapped as hong kong with uh, with hong kong as a location and you want to send to the u.s warehouse only the orders that have been mapped to the u.s to the united states as a location and again this is not always possible so you don't want to go for a partner that offered that, that doesn't split it doesn't offer you to play with the locations because this means that they will receive all the orders and then you will need to stay there every day to cancel orders that are going to the US because it should be only shipped from Hong Kong and then go to the other platform and do the same. And of course, because of the time zone, you may not be able to cancel them on time unless you have the option of manually approving orders and so on. So it will become a mess. So locations are really, really important when it comes to fulfillment. Uh, because the technology used by the warehouse, the platform the warehouse allows you to work with, needs to be able to split. If they don't, it's going to be a mess because they will receive all the orders and you will risk that if you're using two different partners, that both of them will ship the same orders. You have duplicates and that's something you absolutely want to avoid. So this is what you need to keep in mind when it comes to locations and how it impacts the warehouses that you're using, especially when you're using more than one location and more than one warehouse. Always ask the question, does your platform, this is the question you should ask to the warehouse or to the partner that you're using to ship your orders. Do you allow us to split by location? Do you allow us to just sync 
specific location from our Shopify or will you get all the orders independently? Based on the answer, you can already understand the level of the technology, like how good it is, because I mean, it's not really, it doesn't mean that the technology is not good if they don't split by location, but it's just not something customized for e-commerce brands and for Shopify at least. So they should be able to split by location because that's like one of the basic things to, to, to sync with Shopify. Of course, you can, you know, just read about the sending orders to location from here. Now let's go to shipping and delivery, which is generally what we want to focus on. And there are a few options here, um, including the processing time. Like, uh, let's recap how this works, okay? So basically, whenever you ship something, there's what we call a transit time, right? So how long it's going to take to um, deliver the products to your customer from the time it has been picked up. So it's really important that you differentiate the processing time with the transit time and end-to-end, -end, uh, let's say, cycle time. Let's call it that way. So basically, end-to-end -end delivery time. So processing time is the time that you spend uh, to basically pick and pack the order. So you can manage this and you can choose, as you can see, if the processing time is same day, next business day, then two business days. Now you can use this option only if you show the estimated delivery time on the checkout. So I'll show you in a second how to set up transit times, but just be careful because this option is not always available. I'm gonna show you in a second. So let me show you how it works. Basically here, uh, you will be able to show a range if you want, but it's not always available. It really depends on the countries and the location you're shipping from. But ideally, if you're based in the United States, Canada, Italy, I'll show you the list, you will be able to show the transit times, which means Shopify, based on the options that you will set up in the backend, will show the checkout, how long it's gonna to take to deliver, around which dates you should receive the package. So uh, in, like, it, it's gonna look like this. Now, how does it work? As you can see, delivery dates are only available in certain countries, depending on which shipping rate type you set up. Um, deliveries don't work with shipping rates provided by third-party apps. So this means that if you're using your warehouse um, app at the checkout or your warehouse sh shows the rates at the checkout, this is not gonna work. This only works if you basically uh, set up the prices here yourself, like a flat rate. As you can see, I set up um, like for domestic, like some prices, and it's like a flat rate, something that I set up. It's always gonna be this price where a condition is gonna happen. For example, anytime there's something shipped and the customer chooses standard and it's between zero to five kilograms, it's gonna cost 5.99 Hong Kong dollars. So coming back here, uh, this means that this, the, the option of setting up delivery dates on the checkout only works if you set a flat fee or if you're using one of the Shopify uh, couriers. But in general, it doesn't work with third-party apps. If you're using an app, uh, I don't know, like EasyShip or other platforms that allow you to show the rates at the checkout, this is not gonna work because that platform or app is gonna show its own rates and transit times at the checkout. So you can't modify that. Um, of course, here it tells you when you cannot use it. If you're using negotiated courier calculated shipping rates with Canada Post or UPL, uh, or UPS, um, they might not support the delivery dates, so it really depends. Uh, delivery dates don't work with negotiated FedEx calculated rates. If your checkout shows a mix of eligible and eligible shipping rates, the delivery dates aren't displayed for your eligible rates. So it really depends. So in a few words, most likely it's not gonna work for you. Um, it's gonna work if you have US to US and you're using a flat rate or US to Canada and so on. So in a few words, you see, you can set up flat shipping rates with transit times if you use Shopify shipping, of course. Uh, so how does it work? You can use it with a flat rate. So the one that I showed you before uh, here, like if you set up something like this, then you can use it. Then Shopify calculating rates, whenever you use one of those uh, couriers, it's not always applicable and your region country can only be Canada, United States and Australia. So if you're shipping from one of these three countries, then you can use it. Uh, if you set up shipping uh, flat shipping rates, as I show you here, 
then you can do it uh, because it, it's independently from the carrier so transit times will set will, will be predefined and i'm going to show you in a second if negotiated um, carrier calculate rates only with canada and united states or region and for those carriers so it's very limited you need to have a very like um uh, i think united states based type of um, of fulfillment in any case so this is how it's going to work when it comes to uh, the calculation of the transit times there's something you should keep in mind this is something you should keep in mind so uh, let's say that you order on january 22nd then the order cutoff time has going to work anything received after 12 p.m is going to be shipped next day so even if you put here let's go back uh, uh, um, processing time even if at the processing time you put same day as you can see ordered place after 12 p.m are treated treated as if they came the next business day so after 12 p.m they're not going to consider same day they're going to consider in any case next day and if you put next business days it's the same logic so if you put next business days order place after 12 p.m are treated as if they came in the next business day so in a few words if i receive the order today after 12 it's not going to be shipped tomorrow but it's going to be shipped the day after tomorrow because it's the next business day of the next business day um i hope you get what i mean and um processing time like let's say that um this is when you receive the order but it's placed after 12 then it's going to be start processing the next day or if friday is holiday of course it's not going to count as a processing time so processing time is in business uh, days not days and then you have uh, Saturday um, is gonna be a weekend and Sunday is gonna be a weekend so it doesn't count and then again you have Monday processing time and you ship the package uh, on Tuesday so the processing time ends uh, and this transit time starts and then it depends on how long it takes to deliver the product as you can see it's a quite a long um, flow and as you can see this is by default you can change it so um, basically the order comes after 12 stores processing time is set to two business days so in my case here I'm showing you next business days but if I put two business days this is what they mean okay if I put two business days this is the flow look at how long it takes if an order is placed on wednesday how long it takes before it's shipped it takes almost a week so you need to consider this when you let's say propose a time to your um let's say customers like if you provide an sla you should consider when the order is placed and based on that change um let's say the delivery times of what you promise of course that it will be that you will need some customization so maybe at the beginning it's not the case but this is what is tricky right this is what many uh, business fail to uh to do is basically providing a real estimate to their customers because in this case this order even if i ship with express and you know um the customer the checkout is one to five days uh shipping they start thinking from today one to five days but or business days but they haven't considered that there's the whole processing time and there's a weekend in between so if you put processing time of two business days you should write at the checkout as well or write in the policy or write it in a visible place where they can understand that on top of the 20 times there's a processing time because this could end up being very long as you can see let's say that you give one to five days or one to five business days to uh, the customer let's look at it they will start counting from here one two three four five six it's already out of the sla but this is if you're lucky what if someone orders on thursday instead it's going to take even longer than six business days it's going to take seven business days for example to deliver or more because we were lucky here that the express option delivered in three business days what if the express option actually deliver in five business days which is what we tell it could take one to five business days to deliver what if the courier takes the maximum amount of time 
to deliver, which means five business days. It means that we are way out of the SLA that we process, that we propose to our customer. And you should be really, really careful with the promises and um, with the processing time. Of course, you can read more about this here and how you can set this up. Um, so my suggestion would be that if you can't have this automatic calculation at the checkout, you can still have it written somewhere in your website because it's really important that you meet customers' expectations. Now, to go back uh, to the shipping and delivery, I kept same day, uh, but also here I do not suggest to just go for it this way at this point unless you really, really can follow the 12 p.m. threshold because many warehouses will not follow 12 p.m. For many warehouses, they will ship the same day if the orders are received before 2 p.m. or they will ship the same day for orders that are received before 9 a.m. So it's even earlier. So you should consider always next business day at this point because Shopify considers 12 p.m. So um, it's not always, let's say, the case that you could use the processing time. Ideally, if you, can, if you can't really show the estimated delivery like this, I suggest you write it um, somewhere in the, um, the processing time, somewhere in the website, so it's very visible, and then you just rely on the shipping options that we will show you in the next video. Uh, I just noticed this is too long, so we'll make it into two parts. Um, where we will discuss uh, the shipping rates and the conditions more in details. So that's all for part one. Uh, keep in mind the locations and the technology of the warehouse, like the platforms needs to be able to check, to, to fetch and sync only certain orders based on locations and that processing times is agreed also with the warehouse. Just make sure you keep the warehouse also accountable and that you make sure that if they promise you same day delivery for all the same day, uh, sorry, fulfillment, so they will hand over the, to the courier your parcel the same day if the order is received, for example, before 8 a.m. or 9 a.m. or 10 a.m. in the morning, that they actually do that. So keep them accountable for their own SLA. And you should be accountable yourself for the SLA that you propose and you promise to your customers. So that's all about the processing time and how it works in Shopify. Uh, ideally, most likely, if you're an international seller, you may not be able to use this, but there's still shipping and delivery overall that you could benefit from because it's quite detailed. And there are a lot of apps that can help you to set up properly the prices. So we will discuss about this in part two. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. I hope it was helpful. Remember to subscribe to the channel, leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed the video because this is going to help us grow, but also make sure that you always receive updates about my next videos. See you in the next one.